Well, people of God, I want you to give us some hearts and likes as we welcome the man and the woman of God, Apostle Chaz and Strickton and Dr. Joel. Let's everybody, let's welcome Dr. Joel and Whitaker. God bless you, woman of God. Welcome to the broadcast today. Hello, hello. It is so exciting. And I mean, obviously, just such an honor to be back with you again, Dr. Ben. You are so incredibly anointed for really putting together these dream teams, you know, and just getting these assignments from the Lord where he begins to reveal to you specifically and very strategically the topics that need to be addressed and covered for the kingdom at, at this time, praise the Lord for the blessing of the saints, the perfecting of the saints, the glory of God. But then you go to work and just begin to assemble the correct kingdom ambassadors and really just pulling together various streams of anointings and giftings. So I'm very excited. I have already really seen in the spirit as we were praying together before we went live, man, I tell you what, there was some attempted resistance. There was some attempted interference. And I want to make that very clear. It was attempted. But come on, y'all. You know, the devil is under our feet. Little, tiny, little, bitty, delusional suffers from delusions of grandeur and psychosis that's the devil right but our jesus is superior so he never had a shot the lord has anointed this broadcast he's got something to say and the lord has really put it on my spirit very heavily that we are in a time of unity in the body of christ but purification purification in preparation for the things that are to come Nolan, we just lost your sound again. Oh, we hear you now. Go ahead, woman of God. So God has been speaking to me about purification in the body of Christ. He knows the plans he has for the church, among the nations, and for each person listening in their individual life. But there must be an alignment. There must be a purification. Amen. So I really know in my spirit that that's a big part of what we are going to be doing on today. We're going to be exposing this so-called holiday and really just delivering clarity and truth that Satan really hoped that a lot of people who are watching right now, he did not, he didn't ever want you to hear what you're about to hear. So I am on fire. I'm excited. I'm blessed to be here and I'm ready to go. Oh, praise God. People of God, give the Lord a mighty clap. Who's excited? and ready to receive. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you, Dr. Jolin. We received that. Uh, we love and honor your gift and your voice uh, in the season and generation. And it's so wonderful to have you back. And, and I love what you said. We have to be strategic in the assignment and in the assembly. So uh, there is something specific God's releasing today. If you're excited, I want you to say amen. Uh, everybody, let's welcome the man of God, Apostle Chazen Strickland. Both of you are based out of Florida, one of my favorite states, the state of freedom. Apostle Chazen, we were together briefly just even last weekend ministering in Atascadero, California. But I'm so glad to have you. And I knew that us three, we needed to come together for this broadcast. God bless you, man of God. Let's welcome the Apostle people of God. Give us some hearts and likes. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. And once again, it's an honor um, to be on here with the two of you. I look forward to uh, what God is about to do even now. Just the interferences, the technical difficulties that we saw, this lets me know that we're about to see the fire of God and that the devil is about to be exposed. Um, I'm excited because we've been casting out devils um, all over the country from coast to coast. Uh, we have people coming from different parts of the world also to receive deliverance um, and deliverance ministry was a ministry we didn't actually start off in god added that dimension to us very strongly um, in the last two years but i have seen the powers of witchcraft destroyed we have saw python and other types of uh, witchcraft spirits um, completely dismantled um, people that have been set free from so many different things i believe that while we're exposing not just halloween 
but witchcraft in general. Yes. I believe that mighty deliverance is going to take place in people's life and even areas of people's life that has been under witchcraft manipulation. These things are going to be reversed and they're going to see the hand of God in their life. I, I can feel the fire of deliverance already. And so God is going to deliver many people, even on this live, as you're listening from areas that you may not even know are under the power of witchcraft. You're about to be set free and experience the glory instead of the power of witchcraft. My goodness. And, and, and apostle, I mean, you, you blew it out the park on Thursday evening last week, right? I mean, you poured out your heart and there were a, a few strong manifestations of the demonic. And of course, all those people got set free in Jesus name. And uh, so it was wonderful to see you in operation. And not only that, but we, you and I, folks, friends, we have the power of deliverance, which is found in Christ Jesus because he is the deliverer. Amen. So if you are expecting mighty deliverance, I want to just comment right now, mighty deliverance, because there is going to be deliverance and breakthrough freedom from witchcraft, oppression, manipulation, Python, anything that's trying to bind you here today. Amen. If you're excited, people, I'll give the Lord uh, some hearts and likes. Hey, listen, um, we're, I'm going to uh, jump over to Dr. Jolin, but woman of God, I woke up from a dream this morning, and, and it's interesting because even the last time we did a broadcast, I woke up from a very important dream, right? Uh, but I woke up from a dream this morning, and in the dream, Apostle, I was actually in your church, which is very funny. I've never been to your church, but I was actually in your church just as a guest sitting in your church. And uh, it seemed too small, though, but that's another uh, topic. But uh, in the dream, I was in your church, Apostle Chasden, and there were there was a couple there that had really attacked me last year. And these are ministers. And I'm not going to expose or share anything, but these were ministers. And they, they really attacked me and tried to slander me and destroy my name and all of that. But these two people were put to shame and they were put down. And I woke up from the dream this morning. And for me, I received... The prophetic word that God is putting down your enemies. And of course, people are not your enemies. Amen. It's a spirit that's operating behind them and through them and within them. But I believe, people of God, that God is about to expose and put down your enemies. And justice, vengeance, and vindication, recompense is coming to you. Now, the enemy will use people. And people many times will think that they're doing something good. And these can also be ministers. Let me tell you, not all Christians are who they say they are. Not all social media influencers are who they say they are. Amen. And today we want to expose Satan's tactics because sometimes there is Christian witchcraft from leaders and so-called apostles and prophets. But God is about to expose it and set you free and vindication and justice is coming to you in Jesus' name. Now, I woke up from that dream, Dr. Jolin, and I... I know, uh, you know, that may, you know, kind of change uh, how, how we start this broadcast. But I woke up from this dream this morning and I received that for myself. Now, I believe God is going to release that same type of justice and vindication for many people. And if you receive it, I want you to say amen. But Dr. Jolin, talk to us. What comes to your mind as we're talking about exposing Halloween this season and Satan's tactics in this hour and in this realm? Talk to us one minute. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Well, if I may, I would like to say something very briefly uh, about your dream. I feel like it is it is highly prophetic, obviously, uh, but but in alignment with today's broadcast and the content of the broadcast, you know, any kind of manipulation, any any time that someone is trying to control somebody else or destroy somebody else. And you did mention that, you know, it can even be among Christians. I'll tell you something. I'm sure there are plenty of people who have had all kinds of experiences. And my God, it's been in church or it's been at the hands or at the mouth of someone who really believed that they were a lover and a follower of Jesus Christ. But anytime you try to destroy somebody, uh, it is a satanic agenda. Satan is the, uh, the accuser. So all accusation is a satanic voice. 
And when you've got somebody who is on, uh, uh, they're, they're on a mission, they have an agenda to try to put somebody down or try to hold somebody back, that is witchcraft. And witchcraft is, I mean, my God, it's at the, it's at the heart of Halloween. So I believe that it's very interesting that you had that dream about yourself, your experience. But it's interesting to me, Dr. Ben, because just this morning, I mean, I, we had the time, I could show you what I wrote down in my notebook here. Yeah. Because just this morning, the Lord began to minister to me a prophetic word that I'm going to release on Friday about Psalm 23 and about what the Lord does when he has, you know, the battle is the Lord's, but you know this, you know the scripture I'm going to, I can already tell. But when the Lord prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Now, I've said this many times, and I'll, I'll bring it around to our topic, don't worry. I've said this many times, I don't care how spiritual you are, I don't care how holy you are, when you are in pain and you are suffering at the hands of somebody else and it's just unfair, you know, sometimes you can really hope that the Lord will smite them. You, you know, just if there could just be a random lightning bolt, Lord, that just happened to locate them, I, I would make peace with that, right? So sometimes we can want the Lord to just take somebody out. It's not fair. They were incorrect. It was witchcraft, right? And interesting that a lot of the time what they try to accuse you of is exactly what they are, but that's a whole other message for another day. But the Lord has his ways. And what I've noticed so many times, Dr. Ben, is when you have been wrongfully accused and you have been wrongfully attacked and somebody has been operating witchcraft or which is manipulation against you, what the Lord does is he will handle them. You know, Psalm 105.15 says what it says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. The Bible promises that God will contend with those who contend with you. I feel like this is a word for somebody else as well. The moment somebody makes the wrong decision to put their mouth or their hands on a, a servant of the Lord, they have scheduled a judicial experience for themselves. You know, God is a God of justice and righteousness, right? But for us, what he likes to do, and I love it personally, is he likes to promote you and bless you and just favor you all the more in plain view of the people who try to destroy you. So I feel like that is not only confirmation of your uh, dream that you had, amen, but also prophetic for a lot of people here. Because the Lord gave me that word this morning. Amen. So now everybody knows I'm talking about on Friday fire, but moving right along, praise the Lord. Um, so here we are. We are... Uh, the date is October 25th, and a lot of people all over the world are getting ready to celebrate this so-called holiday that a lot of people think is just harmless. I mean, it's a little spooky, but they, they feel like that's part of the fun, right? So today we're going to expose, I'm going to actually talk about the roots of it. I'm going to talk about where it comes from and what the traditions actually mean and where it really originated. I don't care what anybody believes or what they're saying now. And I have to mention that, Dr. Ben, because it blows my mind, but I recently became aware that there are some people in the body of Christ and they have a voice, they have a platform, and they are actually advocating for Halloween. They are actually advocating for celebrating and being at peace with celebrating how i mean i if i didn't see it with my own eyes i might not believe it so if you're listening to this broadcast right now at home and if you have ever heard somebody who has come in the name of jesus and tried to tell you and I don't, they may have seemed very sincere and maybe you know maybe they knew what they were saying maybe they didn't but if anyone has ever come to you in the name of jesus and tried to convince you or convey to you that there is no harm in Halloween or participating in Halloween. I want to expose that right now in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar, and that is a lie. Halloween is absolutely, as a matter of fact, let me just uh, quote 
the name of the man is Anton LaVey, and apparently he's the founder of the Satanic Temple. And you can Google this, guys. He is on record as having said, and I quote, I'm so happy that at least one day a year, parents allow their children to worship the devil. It is very well known that Halloween is a time when people go to psychics and, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're going to haunted houses and they're just, you know, having fun with feeling spooky as if it is harmless. But the reality of it is this. The holiday that people call Halloween actually originated among the Celtic culture. And it was a holiday called Samhain. Now, I want to make a note of pronouncing it correctly because it's spelled Sam Hain, but it's pronounced Samhain. And it's not a far jump to see where we get the word Halloween. But it's interesting because when Constantine came to power and he wanted to integrate, pay attention now, when he wanted to integrate pagan cultures and heathen communities into the church and convert them, he made the decision to let them keep their holidays and just gave them new names. And so Samhain became All Hallows Eve, a day when they just celebrated the dead and they remembered the dead. And so we see that really, it started out as a pagan tradition. It started out as a pagan holiday of Samhain. Fascinating to me that some of the um, earmark traditions of that holiday were carving, originally they carved turnips and they would carve faces into turnips. Later on it became pumpkins and they would put candles inside those carved turnips and later pumpkins and the idea, the intent behind that was to scare away demons and to scare away ghosts because it was believed that on the night of Samhain, the veil between the living and the dead was the thinnest that it would be all year. And the people believed that ghosts could cross and demons could cross uh, the line more easily on that night. So they would carve these, these faces into these jack-o'-lanterns and put them on their doorstop to try to scare away a demon. And, and how is that anything to do with Jesus? who sets us free, who has put all, the devil under our feet, who has given us all authority over the devil and all the evil dark works of the devil. Come on, the Bible says that demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Come on now. So it doesn't make any sense that we would ever want to reenact some of these pagan traditions. Can we talk about costumes? The idea behind dressing up in a costume on that night was because the people were hoping that the demons and the ghosts that were wandering around would not recognize them. Guys, I can't understand why anybody who loves the Lord Jesus Christ would want to participate in something that has these dark demonic roots. Halloween or Samhain always was uh, tied to the occult, always. It was always tied to the demonic realm. Now we can come to the modern day, we can come to the present time, where it is very well known that Halloween is the most active night of the year for satanic rituals, for child sacrifice, for blood rituals, for witches' covens getting together and to do their thing. People of God, we got to come out from among them. Come on, there is, there is no fellowship between darkness and light. Can I have one more second? There's something I'm really burning to So well, come on, let's, let's you're, you're in deep, go for it, woman of God. Praise the Lord, thank you so much. So Dr. Ben, I know that you know this about me and a lot of people who are familiar with my ministry or follow my ministry, you also know this about me, praise the Lord. I wrote a book about it. Amen. But you know, my prophetic anointing has been a part of my life for literally as long as I can remember. When I was a little girl, I had dreams and they would 
you know, manifest and come forth and come true to forensic detail from the time I was very young. From the time I was very young, people would say something, and I, I, in my mind, I'm seven years old, I'm like, they're not telling the truth. <laughs> That's not true. And that was just the anointing that I had. Now, I was raised in the Catholic Church. Stay with me. I'm going to show you something. And in the Catholic Church, there was no explanation for the gift that I had. It, it just wasn't there. When I was 14 years old, my mother made friends with a woman and she confided in this woman about the gift that I had and by the way my grandmother had it too and I was gonna say something grandma's juice was another level praise the lord she was anointed like mm. it's fascinating to me how these things were anyway let me just stay with the current moment but my mother confided in her new friend about the the gifting that I, little Joelle, had, and I'll never forget it. This woman's name was Diana, and she looked at me one day. She was visiting at our house, and she said, you know, you have a gift. You're psychic. And that started a whole period of my life where I was seeking and searching and trying to find the answers that I never heard in church. And ironically, I love the Lord with my whole heart, went to church Wednesday faithfully, Sunday faithfully, confession on Saturday, right? But there was no information about in the church about the gifting that I had, the anointing. So I have a whole period of my life, Dr. Ben, where I studied all these things. You can't tell me nothing about witchcraft. You can't tell me nothing about the history of these holidays. If I had to, I could teach a workshop on Buddhism, on Islam, on Wicca, on, on all kinds of things. What we want to talk about, astrology, numerology, I've studied it all. And now I understand the Lord really meant it when he told me back in 2011. He said, I've given you the enemy's playbook to use you to expose and to bring revelation. Praise the Lord. I feel the anointing. So come on. Come on. So there are Christians in the body of Christ who have made peace with Halloween. They think that it's okay. They think that, you know, they can still uh, love Jesus and serve Jesus. But really what it is, is they have one foot in the, not just in the world, but they have one foot in the demonic. And they're trying to have the other foot in the presence of God. It doesn't work that way. It will never work that way. The Lord has made it clear all throughout the Bible that we are to serve him and only him, that he will not tolerate if we have other gods among us. If somebody is still celebrating Halloween, knowing that it is tied to the occult, knowing that it has pagan origin, knowing that it is a holiday where people are literally putting out monsters and witches and there's nothing good about it. There's nothing light about it. It's time to understand that the devil has been using this, many other things as well, but he has for sure been using this to bring apathy on some Christians and to cause a disconnect and to introduce um, contamination, contamination into their life. I could say a lot more, but I'll leave it right there for now. Um, final comment on it, it's not harmless. It is literally opening a door to the demonic. It is giving legal entry to the devil and to the agenda of the devil. And those doors need to be shut. Amen. God, uh, I feel the fire of God, the fear of the Lord right now as well. And I feel the spirit of deliverance rising up. So we have about 444 people watching right now, there's going to be a spirit of deliverance rising up out of you. And I believe right now there's going to be a breaking of ties of Wicca, witchcraft, of the demonic realm, of new age seances. There's going to be breakthrough coming to you in your family. And some of you, you've been experiencing the mixture of false doctrines, one foot in the world, one foot in the Lord. There's going to be an exposure and a deliverance coming to your life today. And if you believe that, say amen and give us some hearts and likes. 
Dr. Jolin, thank you so much just even going deep and sharing the history and teaching us line upon line just the history and the roots, the origins of Halloween because we understand always look at the origins of something. Always look at the roots, the beginning, the inception of something. I feel the Holy Ghost. And how you see the contamination or the manipulation, the twisting, which witchcraft in the Latin means to craft and to be witty, means to wittily craft, manipulate something, and that's sorcery divination. But I feel the power of God right now. And I'm so glad that you took us down that lane. And just even for you, opening up a little bit and sharing your story. Because I know, Dr. Jolin, your testimony means that you have an authority over this. And you also are going to set so many more people free in Jesus' name. So let's give it up for the Lord, for the woman of God, Dr. Jolin Whitaker, Apostle Chazden Strickland. My goodness. Uh, talk to us just about, you know, exposing Halloween and Satan's tactics. Because I feel the spirit of deliverance rising up right now. And people of God, you better get your bags, your buckets ready. because. The Holy Ghost is going to release fire, and you're going to experience the power of God. Apostle Chaz, to talk to us, man of God. First, I want to say that was one of the best breakdowns um, that I've heard on Halloween. Um, and so the roots of that being exposed, I pray that people's eyes were opening up. But you kept mentioning something about how a lot of people feel like this is, this is harmless. And in my experience of casting out devils, one thing I can say is many times uh, when people have doors opened up into their life for spirits to enter, many times that's what they say is I felt like what I was doing was completely harmless. Um, and this is often how the enemy opens up the doors and enters into people's lives. Um, so something I do want to touch on because witchcraft is such a broad subject. And so going back all the way into just how deceptive witchcraft really is, um, the first time we actually see the manifestation of witchcraft um, is actually in heaven. It's when the third of the angels um, came under witchcraft because of Satan. Um, and so we have to understand that that was witchcraft that caused them to uh, be deceived to join the campaign um, against God with Lucifer. Um, once they were cast out, we also see that witchcraft played a major role in the fall of man. And so we see that um, once she heard the word serpent um, and believed the word of the serpent, this caused her to come under witchcraft. It changed the way that she viewed the tree of life. And it changed the way that she viewed the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so these things were witchcraft. Now, what happens when men fall? Because the Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And so witchcraft is like the default setting of fallen men. Now, the reason why this to me is so important to highlight, when many people think of witchcraft, uh, they think of places like Africa, continents like Africa. They yep. think of Haiti. They begin to name these places like the Bahamas. Um, but something that is very prevalent is that witchcraft is on every single continent of the earth. Uh, witchcraft is present um, in, in different families, uh, neighborhoods. Um, your family probably has a witchcraft representative at some point in your bloodline. Now, the reason why I'm making this uh, important is because it's going back to what she was mentioning as she was breaking down how many people feel this is harmless. Um, witchcraft adapts to culture. Mm. And so it may not look the same here in America, but I want everyone to know that witchcraft is very prevalent um, here, right here in the United States and, and whatever nation that you represent that you're watching, there's witchcraft in the nation. Now, uh, all forms of witchcraft, as far as scripture goes, uh, there are actually different, um, we could say 10 different roots of all types of witchcraft that's found in Deuteronomy. And so as we take a look, we see it in um, chapter 18. And if we go to verse number nine, we see these 10 things mentioned and all forms of witchcraft touch one of these things or multiples of these things. Um, and it says, um, when thou art come into the land, which the Lord your God giveth thee, thou shalt not 
learn to do after the abominations of those nations. It says, there shall not be found among you one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. That's one. It says, or that uses divination. That's two. An, or an observer of time. That's three. An enchanter. That's four. A witch. That's five. A charmer. That's six. A consulter with familiar spirits. So we see these numbers rising. Um, a wizard or a necromancer. So these are where, uh, these are, as far as scripture goes, this is where we see like a detailed breakdown of the administration of witchcraft. Now, something I want everyone to know is that in the beginning, we see that God makes everything by speaking. Um, and as he's making everything by speaking, we know he eventually forms and creates Adam. Um, and once he makes Adam, there was a unique shift that took place. Um, and this is going to expose something about witchcraft that's very prevalent of why he wants to recruit people by making things seem like they're harmless. Um, and so here it is, a shift happens. God goes from speaking to creation, and then he begins to speak to Adam. This was the shift of dominion because Adam now began to speak to creation on behalf of God. So from that moment, the realm of the earth had been given to men by God. And so man was given dominion. What this means is that by God's design for things to manifest on the earth, it requires a person in the physical. Right. And so what the enemy does, because there's a lot that could be said about witchcraft, but what the enemy does is he begins to use witchcraft to recruit. We see the nature of this after Eve comes under witchcraft. Once Eve comes under witchcraft, the first thing she does is she recruits her husband to mm. also come under witchcraft as well and eat the fruit. Now, with that said, though, this is what I want everyone to see. What happens is that for God to move, we see this pattern all through the Bible. For God to move, he finds a man. For God to move, he locates a person. That's why in Ezekiel it says that he looked for someone that would stand in the gap against him, but he could not find anyone. Therefore, he poured out his indignation. And so this means that something that was not the will of God took place because there was no one to cry out for mercy. And so this means God does not move in the earth without our involvement. But likewise, because dominion was given to man, the devil needs human agents. So witchcraft is the operating center of everything the devil will do on the earth. And so what this means is he needs people to participate in witchcraft practices in order to bring his agendas into the earth. And one of the ways that he does this, to me, one of the most dangerous types of witches are those that are called blind witches. These are people that are not necessarily educated in witchcraft, but they're people that they've come under witchcraft and under the influence of witchcraft spirits. And then these spirits begin to use them to, to do certain acts um, that seem harmless to them. But what they're doing is, number one, they're bringing their self under witchcraft, but the enemy can also use them to bring other people um, under witchcraft power, use them to curse other people, use them. That's why even in the body of Christ, there are leaders in the body that are operating in witchcraft and they do not know it. Uh, there are individuals that through different types of dreams that they have, they've been initiated into the, the, the kingdom of, of Satan um, through these types of dreams. Uh, one thing I want to point out, because I felt like there was almost no reason to even dive into the history of, of Halloween because it was broken down so well. But, but one more thing I want to point out is that the enemy causes us through our ignorance to entertain different witchcraft practices. And this is why you see so many believers, uh, they watch scary movies still. This is why you see so many believers, uh, they, they go by their horoscope. And it's because they do not have a revelation. You know, when David prayed and he said that he would not be smitten by the sun by day, nor the moon by night. He understood something concerning uh, the realm of even the heavens, the stars. He understood certain things. I don't have time to break it down, but, but even that is a form of divination. 
um, when people begin to entertain horoscopes and things like that. And so what we have is a, a generation of the church that because we have avoided preaching on deliverance so much, Jesus. Uh, we are not going to stop believers from celebrating Halloween simply by saying Halloween is evil. We have to educate the body of Christ of the enemy's devices, and it needs to be clear of what witchcraft actually is so that we have a generation that doesn't go into those things. Also, our churches cannot lack the supernatural because when we lack the supernatural, as doctor was breaking down, she said that she was experiencing the prophetic realm, but she could not find expression of it in the church. And so here it is, because these things are lacking, yet there are people that are called to be prophets, called to be apostles, called to be dreamers of dreams. And they're having this, these encounters and the church is telling them that that's not, uh, you know, that's that's not right. And, you know, I don't know, maybe you're just crazy what's happening is that the occult is going out and recruiting these individuals because what they're experiencing in the supernatural is real. And so it's so important that the church comes out of being seeker sensitive, seeker friendly, and that we stop being afraid to offend people. Because once we do that, we'll begin to snatch people out of the bondage of, of, of even operating in blind witchcraft. We'll, we'll begin to expose witches and warlocks in the pulpit. We'll begin to expose um, even how to gain victory in our families. Witchcraft is present and operating. Amen. My goodness, man of God, I feel like I want to throw a shoe right now, okay? Uh, but you you just pinpointed so much right there. The lack of power in our churches and ministries causes, hear me now, causes people to be stuck in their sin and their ignorance, which becomes a stronghold or a cesspool for demons to contract to, attract towards. And now that opens up the door to the other realms of the supernatural. Now, I believe right now God is releasing power. Well, one of uh, Jesus' uh, main ministries, uh, pretty much a third of his ministry, is casting out devils. Jesus said that you will preach the gospel, you will heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out devils. And a lot of times that is ignored or shied away from, but it's the power of God that causes demonic entities and oppression to be cast out. It needs to be cast out, come out. It needs to be thrusted out. It's a fight. It's a battle because demons want to stay. That demon in you wants to stay. That spirit of mixture, that that uh, that's unclean spirit wants to stay. It doesn't want to leave. It's comfortable in your body. It's comfortable in your life, but it's going to get cast out. Um, Dr. Jolie, woman of God, Talk to us. I mean, Apostle Chazen just shared so much right there. And if you're enjoying these people, God, give us some hearts and likes. But Apostle Chazen said that because there's a lack of power in churches, therefore people are hungry for the supernatural. Therefore, it opens up their doors of interest. Because, number one, we're already spiritual beings. We're already supernatural beings. We're not meant to be religious, right? We're, we're already spiritual supernatural. So there's a hunger. And if you are hungry for the things of God, then this broadcast is for you because the Spirit of God is going to release an impartation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But Dr. Jolin, what comes to your mind, just even as Apostle Chazin just shared right now? Go ahead. My goodness. I mean, we could ping pong all day with this. This man of God said something. And I was like going here and I'm going there. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Um. I would like to speak to two things specifically right off the bat. The first thing is, Dr. Ben, you just hit something so, well, Apostle said it first, but, and then you reiterated, our churches have got to host the presence and the power of the Lord. It was never intended to be any other way. Yeah. Right? I mean, we could spend a lot of time tracing back how this happened, but the reality is, over time, churches became devoid of the power of God. And now what we are seeing a lot of, uh, and I bet you I bet you men of God have seen it as well, is there are leaders who are actually embarrassed of the move of the Holy Ghost. 
they're embarrassed to speak in tongues. They're embarrassed uh, when people fall down on the floor. They're embarrassed when somebody, I'm just going to say this, listen, when somebody starts to throw up because they're receiving deliverance, they're embarrassed when there's manifestation, demonic manifestation in the service, right? And I've literally been in a service where I've seen the pastor ignore it, and the Holy Spirit said, oh, he always does that because he's not anointed to cast them out. Could, could have taken me right out right there. We need the power of God in our churches. We need the fivefold. Fivefold. There are people, this is something the Lord's been talking to me about a lot ever since the lockdowns, but there are so many people in church and they love Jesus. They love God, but they are going through things and they are dealing with things that they don't have. They're dealing with sickness that they shouldn't have to deal with. They're dealing with demonic oppression that they shouldn't have to deal with. They're dealing with poverty and all kinds of other uh, works of the devil in their life that they should not have to deal with if there is the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost in the house, in the house. Holy Ghost has a way of burning all that stuff out. But, you know, another thing the Lord uh, spoke to me about many years ago is that sometimes a leader does not want an apostle or prophet to come in. An apostle can seem intimidating to a pastor. That apostle's not there to take over. That apostle is there to maybe clean house and bring some order. But ain't nobody trying to take over your church, pastor. You must allow the apostolic to do what it is that God has anointed his apostles to do. There is a lot of disorder and there is a lot of uh, lack of, of dunamis and exousia in the body of Christ. And for those who don't know, exousia, Luke 10, 19, that is uh, authority, that is power over works of the darkness of the devil. Dunamis, Acts 1, 8, the power of the Holy Ghost when it comes on you. And it is that same power that destroys or breaks the yoke out of Isaiah. Praise the Lord. But if you don't have the power of God, there's going to be habitation of many demonic things and people begin to think it's normal they begin to think i'm just gonna go there they begin to think the various aspects of oh come on anxiety depression illnesses uh, uh, cutting right and all other types of de uh, works of the devil people will begin to think you know it gets normalized to them but the reality is we are called to be people of the Lord who walk and flow in signs, wonders, and miracles, and that is supposed to be our normal. Praise the Lord that I could go over here. A lot of a lot of people, well, pastors, leaders, hesitate to have a prophet in if that's a real prophet. And I've been in churches, and the Holy Spirit has said, you know, they were afraid to have you come. He's hoping you don't tell about. <laughs> and, and I won't say any more than that. Praise the Lord. Uh, you know, so there is a hesitation there. There is also an, uh, a very prevalent belief and a very prevalent attitude, especially in large or seeker-sensitive churches, where they, they shy away from the supernatural because they're thinking about offending their people. They don't want to look weird. They're thinking about making everybody comfortable. They don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable. They're thinking about their numbers. They're thinking about their membership. They're thinking about their tithes and offerings. Come on, I'm just going to expose it, right? So there are uh, various reasons why people will not have the apostolic or the prophetic into their churches but make no mistake and if you are a pastor listening to this right now i'm not attacking you i want to i want to say something in love to you number one your church will only benefit and grow by allowing god's apostles and prophets to come in and do what we do You'll only benefit, you'll only grow. Praise the Lord. There's going to come a moment when God is going to ask certain leaders, why 
did you keep the gifts of the Spirit and the moves of the Holy Ghost? Why did you deprive your people? And let me just help. There will be no reason that is good enough. You know, I, I oh, sometimes people think they're protecting their platform for all the reasons I just said. But mark my words, and this is prophetic, in 2023, there are going to be some very big ministries, some very prominent and well-known. I, I have no joy in saying this. No joy whatsoever. I wish I didn't have to. I would that it were not so. I, mm. But in 2023, you got to hear what I'm saying by the Spirit of God. There are going to be some churches. There are going to be some ministries who currently consider themselves to be too big to fall. But Jesus has knocked at the door and knocked at the door and knocked at the door. And they are more concerned with their numbers or their programs, right? And they have not let the Lord do what he wants to do. Well, I don't know how to say this any other way, so I'm just going to say it. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. There are people who need to encounter the real Jesus. There are people who need to encounter the real, the real God who created this planet and all of humanity, who is the God of miracles. Praise the Lord. And the Lord is going to sit some people down. And there are going to be new mantles that are going to be given. There are going to be, there's going to be supernatural increase for some ministers and ministries. Or people like Apostle Chasteman, you, as a matter of fact, let me just prophesy, you need to buckle up because you are getting ready to be propelled to a, a different position because the Lord must put his committed and fearless on fire servants in prominent positions because people need to know where to go. So they're going to have to be able to see you easily. They're going to have to be able to recognize who is a true man or woman of God, who is a true servant of the Lord. They're going to need to be able to recognize that quickly and easily. How do they recognize it? By the power of God. As a matter of fact, not to get too far off the beaten path, but the Lord gave me a prophetic word a couple of weeks ago. He said this. He said that soon... I have such a fear of God to even say this, but he said soon you will be able to look at a ministry or a minister and simply by their fruit, mm. you will know who has the power of God and who does not. He said, and then watch what happens to the ones who do not. I always wondered about that scripture that said brother would rise against brother. Spirit whispered to me, he said, this is how it happened. This is how it's going to happen. Just like those 10 spies couldn't stand Joshua and Caleb because they had faith to go for their inheritance. They were not intimidated by the giants. And then the, the other 10 spies talked of stoning them. This is how the Lord said it's going it's to go in the season to come. But anyway, another reason we need the power of God in full operation in our churches is because there are people who are hungry for the supernatural. We're made that way. We are children of God. So we naturally crave a supernatural encounter. We read the word of God. We read that healing is the children's bread. We read the word of God. We hear that the Lord speaks to us in dreams and in visions. And if you think people aren't looking for it, believe me, they are. And when they don't find it in pure operation in a church or a ministry, that's when they start consulting spirit animals in the sky. I'm talking about horoscopes. That's when they start uh, veering off into the Enneagram, trying to get insight uh, into themselves and things of this nature. It's all doctrines of demons. It is all contamination. And here's one more thing that I would say. The Lord is... He put this heavy on my spirit before we even began the broadcast. Now, I know that both of you men of God are highly anointed for increase, and you are highly anointed for favor and acceleration and growth. Just a quick glance at your ministries, that's evident. That's your fruit. That's, that's how you flow. You're anointed in those areas. The Lord began to speak to me quite some time ago, and he said, there are going to be people 
who are drawn to the ministers and ministries that I have anointed to release favor, to release wealth, to speak acceleration, to move in signs, wonders, and miracles. And there are going to be people who are attracted to that because it's natural to want it. It is for us. But if they have blocks in place, if they have legal operating contracts with the devil because they celebrate Halloween and refuse to quit, because they entertain things like the Enneagram or celebrating Halloween. And because uh, listen, there are going to be people who will hear this broadcast and they they're hearing truth right now. You know, they're hearing the truth. And guess what? It pains me to say they're still going to carve their pumpkins. They're still going to dress up their kids. Now, not you listening at home. I praise the Lord, not you. Praise God. But them, some of these people over here, because some people won't listen. And that's part of what the Lord was revealing and ministering to me about. When there is rebellion place, when there are contracts that have been created between you and the demonic, and maybe you didn't know it, Maybe you didn't realize that uh, consulting divination horoscopes, that consulting divination tarot cards, that uh, consulting, looking into witchcraft angel cards. Angels don't speak through cards. Okay? They, they just show me that in the Bible. I'll wait. That's what I thought. But when people who love the Lord go to those things, and they begin to seek out answers or, or what they, a spiritual experience because they naturally crave it. They are opening the door and giving legal access to the demonic. Now, Satan is a legalist. Yes, he is. And so now there is accusation that will absolutely stand in the courts of heaven. All through the Bible, the Lord has made it very clear do not serve any other gods above me. Apostle Chasm just broke it all down, all the different types of witchcraft. And the Lord made it very clear. It's in the word. And God said that there are ministers like Dr. Ben, like Apostle Chaston, who are anointed to release, to deliver, who are anointed to release increase, who are anointed for signs, wonders, and miracles. But there are people who will sit in the pew or they will sit in a service and become disenfranchised and get mad at God because they're not receiving, because they're not, they're not, uh, they're, 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 they're not seeing the manifestation of the prophetic word. They're not seeing the manifestation of the miracle in their life. All the while they have a legal contract or a block in place because they're in rebellion. I hope that makes sense. No, Dr. Jolin, it absolutely does. And people of God, if you're receiving right now, I want you to say amen and give some hearts and likes because Dr. Jolin just shared so much truth and exposed uh, how witchcraft can blind the people of God and how this oppression, ignorance is not bliss, ignorance kills. And Dr. Jolin, you just so meticulously just laid out that we as people are being like sheep to the slaughter without even thinking, without even being filled with the Holy Ghost, without even being filled with the word, with the Bible. And therefore, we're actually consulting in mediums and we're consulting in, in sorcerers and we don't know it. But because there's a genuineness of your heart where you're hungry, you crave these things, but it's leading you astray. And let me tell you, people of God, God is drawing a line in the sand right now. And he is going to continue to release the power of God and deliverance, breakthrough, for those who truly want to receive it and step up to the next season. Apostle Chaslin, we're going to go back to you, hallelujah, but there's so many believers, people that are stuck in delusion and deception. You know, even this Sunday, I was preaching on my home church, Open Heavens World in Southern California, and I could feel the witchcraft in the air, unfortunately. And it was blocking the ability for people to connect with God, number one, 
to connect with the word, number two. And because their personal state was all over the place, I couldn't even preach or teach the word. We just had to go deeper into intercession and warfare worship. And I finally broke through. But there's a lot of people, you're being blocked, delayed, hindered, oppressed by these spiritual powers, entities against you. And yes, you open the door. Yes, you take authority, take ownership. You open the door. And like Dr. Jolin said, made a legal contract by the power of agreement by opening the door and doing certain things. But I believe right now God is going to break those things off of your life so that you can increase some of the lack of increase or the spirit of lack in your life or their cycles of reoccurring patterns, people leaving your life, same Jezebelic attitudes, manifestations coming back into your life. Those are reoccurring patterns of witchcraft and of the enemy. And we're going to destroy that today. But Apostle Chazen, talk to us for a little bit more, man. God, what comes to your mind, even as we heard Dr. Jolene share, Dr. Jolene Sharon, and just what comes to your mind, man of God? Well, um, one of the first things I'll say is, as it was being broken down, the need for apostles and prophets, one of the things that really stands out to me about people that are called to the apostolic um, the prophetic office in scripture you see that they actually confronted witchcraft it's something that's very very prevalent in scripture we see it with moses right we see it with daniel um, we, we begin to walk through and we look at peter right when we look at paul we see these confrontations we look at elijah right and so it's something that's very prevalent and i believe that it's part of our assignment in the body of christ that if we are going to be apostolic and prophetic people we must also be people of spiritual warfare i like to think about it like being like david David was an intimate lover of God. He had a very strong passion for the glory and for the presence of God. But he was a man of war. Um, and, and this that Davidic anointing uh, must come upon us again. And when I think of David's tabernacle, I believe that that's what's being broken down. David is a type of the end time church. The type of uh, uh, that we see where David uh, even calls Goliath to come down. Um, when we're talking about our city, city transformation, you cannot do city transformation without confronting witchcraft. Uh, and we've been trying to do it by dancing around this elephant in the room. But this is the reality. That's absolutely true. Witchcraft is responsible for many of the conditions of our cities. Um, and, and I want to show us something really quick. In Nahum, um, and, and Nahum really shows us when I mention some of these things, it's going to sound like some of the cities that we live in. It's going to sound like some of the nations that we live in. And so when we look at uh, Nahum um, and it begins to break down. It says, woe to the bloody city. It is full of lies and robbery. Um, they look at this. The prey departed not. The noise of the whip and the noise, a rattling of the wheels and of the panting horses and of the jumping chariots. The horsemen lifted up. Look at this, both the sword and the glittering spear. And there is a multitude slain. Um, I want to break this down in a minute. And great number of carcasses. And there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses because of the multitude of whoredoms and well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcraft. Look at this, that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcraft. These are some of the marks that, that give evidence that witchcraft is operating in our cities. And these are the things that God is raising up. Apostles, prophets, these apostolic hubs and centers, these places of the move of his spirit that host the presence of God. We're not just there to experience presence and laugh and enjoy God. And there's a mandate. Now, there, there is a mandate. There's an assignment to drive back the devil. But look at this, some of these marks, lies, deception, manipulation, robbery, stealing. One of the assignments of witches is to steal. They steal from the people of God. They steal what belongs to God. Because even when you see like an entertainer, someone that becomes wealthy through witchcraft means, where do you think the money came from? They stole the wealth from the church. 
They mm -hmm. stole the wealth from families, from individuals. Now, they might not have stolen it in money form, but they stole it in the form of virtue. Um, the next thing, uh, murder. Look how much it causes a bloody city. Cities with high murder rates. These are evidence that you are looking at the activity of witchcraft. One reason why is because when the blood banks of the enemy go empty, witches need blood. Okay, and so bloodshed. So even when we saw the turning of Roe versus Wade, it lifted off something Hallelujah. from our yeah. nation that Hallelujah. was connected to that. I feel the anointing even while I'm talking about it right okay. now. Something broke off of our nation. They were using the blood. Um, and we understand Malek, but there was a connection to the blood. Um, the next thing that we see, you know, through these abortions, look at the election. And, and I want to say something that I, I believe really should stand out. What was said even by the Democratic Party was that this was a fight for the soul of the nation. Yes. Now, something that stands out in our verse here, it says nations are exchanged by witchcraft in our verse. So this, when you see a nation go from liberty whether you have freedom and all of a sudden you see the government shift into being tyrannical you know that what you're actually looking at behind the scenes is witchcraft when you see nations with persecution where you're not allowed to worship jesus you know that what you're actually looking at is witchcraft so when a nation has been exchanged in the spiritual realm what this means is that the original destiny of that nation has been manipulated by witchcraft, the birthright of that nation. Because not only do individuals have birthrights, but families have birthrights, and even cities have birthrights, regions have birthrights, nations have birthrights. And these things are exchanged by witchcraft. Also, we see families exchanged in our verse. So some of us are living a life that has been perverted and manipulated by witchcraft. You're not supposed to be in poverty. You're not supposed to be sick in your body. You're not supposed to be. Many of these things are carried out by the function of witchcraft. Um, and then I want to point out something, though. You see the, the of the harlot, the mistress of witchcraft. Now, we know that witchcraft is often viewed as, um, as a, the, the power that people go to when they don't want to submit to God. But but something I want to point out, there's a connection between witchcraft and sexual immorality. Right. And so when you see these levels being very high in our cities, this is evidence of the presence of witchcraft. The reason I'm pointing this out is because as I'm talking, I want everyone to think about it just in the U.S. Look at New York. Look at Chicago. Look right. at Detroit. Begin to walk through some of our major cities. And I want you to see this is telling us that behind the scenes that that there is witchcraft activity in our cities that God is calling apostles and prophets to rise up and break the power of. I believe that there are churches that are small, and the reason they're small is because the activity of witches. See, witches are not praying against churches that are dead. They're, they're praying against places where the fire is. This Come is on. why even in the Bible, we saw when they were on their way to pray, we see the woman that was operating in divination. We see the woman that had the python spirit. Now, watch when she showed up. It was while they were on their way to pray. Now, you cannot talk about witchcraft without talking about python. Uh, python is responsible for many things. But we, when you look at python, I want everyone to think of python as a false holy spirit it, it works to do the function uh, in the life of people that the holy spirit would do it wants to cut people off from real revelation and so even in your city for if there's leaders on here when people rise up against the revelation of the glory i want you to know that this means that python is functioning in that city it means that there's a strong man over that city of python trying to cut off the voice of the spirit. Yes, it's Jezebel, but there's also Jezebel cannot operate without Python being present, um, which is why she's a false prophet. But, but something I want everyone to see, I feel the anointing talking about this. I want everyone to see this, that whenever you are dealing with Python, because Python wants to be a false, it operates like a false Holy Spirit. Some of the evidences that individuals are dealing with Python uh, it's things like this. When you are reading the Bible and you fall asleep, uh, th this is responsible for individuals becoming very, very fatigued when it comes time to do spiritual things. Anytime where they will receive revelation, they become very fatigued. 
Uh, another example of Python being an operation, individuals who their dreams get cut off, P people that don't really dream a lot, or they tell me they never dream. Oftentimes, this lets me know that Python is operating, because remember, Python is anti-revelation. And so Python operates against you hearing the revelation of God because it wants you to hear its lies and deceptions. Now, while we're talking about this, why am I bringing this up? I'm once again, highlighting how there's a lot more witchcraft than what people realize right here in the States. Um, when many people go to sleep at night, witches will stay up um, and they'll begin to do their craft. Now, when they're doing this, they're, they're oftentimes commissioning spirits. Um, to go and do different things in the night. They're also, they will also astral project themselves. Uh, and, and, and one of the common things they do is astral project into people's dreams. Now, they can come into people's dreams in the form of animals. They can also come into people's dreams looking like themselves. They can also masquerade as other people um, in dreams. Now, why am I saying this? We just, just from what I just said, we just said we talk, shape shifting is in America right here in this nation because i told you they come in the form of animals in your dreams so there are times where you see a snake in your dream and it actually could be the witch there's times where you see the a crocodile in your dream it could actually be the witch mm -hmm. uh, and just so you know a lot of what's carried out against the people of god takes place in the realm of dreams and so during these types of times there's a heightened level of fear there's a heightened level demonic dreams people begin to have a lot of witchcraft dreams and things like that it is because the higher levels of witchcraft that are operating at this time of year but there's something i want to say why did the devil put halloween in the month of october okay talk to us this is something that's so important because the enemy understands because we know he's a counterfeiter he's a he's a perverter this is the time of the year of the three feast of the lord come on right. So this is a very holy time. This is actually a time where the supernatural of God should be at its highest height. In fact, when well, you look at some of the greatest demonstrations of God's glory and power, they happen around this time of year. Oh, yes. When you begin to go into this time of year, this is when the red parted. This is when manna began to come out of the doors of heaven and men ate angel food. Some of the most powerful things that we see are connected to this time of the year. It's also a time of year where you're stepping into the, the, the start of the actual new year. Yes. Now, why does the enemy want to release strong levels of witchcraft? He wants to arrest your year mm. before it even starts. I got this. And so he's trying to arrest and manipulate things that God wants to do in your year. Because I'll use um, Yom Kippur as an example. Yom Kippur, which has passed now, but just so everyone understands why the priest would enter in during that time of year, why he would go in and sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat. We know it would cover the sin of the nation for the year, but what else did it do? It determined new year. Yep. It determined if, that they would experience God's goodness and mercy for the entire year following it. So, why does the enemy use this time of the year? There's things that he programs into people's life using the door of, of witchcraft, things like Halloween, things like these things, to cause it to open doors to him. And he comes in and begins to pervert and manipulate the plans of God. It is this time of year where it's even decided that certain people will live or die going yeah. into the next year. I'm so the enemy is coming in during this time of year because this is a critical point of transition. Um, and if he can arrest this point in the year in the life of people, many people would not experience all that God has planned prophetically to take place in everyone's life that year. And this is why it's so important that in these critical times that we understand what the enemy is doing. But we must also understand that this was intended to be the time of harvest, even when they would bring seeds during this time of the year. This was very prophetic because this was a time of year of the final harvest. And this was the time of year where God, once again, would determine what you would experience following that next going into the new year. And so the enemy wants to arrest the year to pervert and to affect the times and seasons of your life through 
witchcraft. To us, it's something as small as, well, I'm just dressing my kid up in a costume and they're just getting candy. But you must understand a lot of this candy is even dedicated to the devil. Right. Come now, on. I don't know the type of time to, to fully break down, but I want to take a risk. Uh, <laughs> and I want to take a risk and I'm going to say this. One of the main functions of, of witchcraft as well uh, that brings people under bondage is what we eat. Um, eating is a big deal. Come on. Uh, when it comes to witchcraft. Um, and people may say, well, that doesn't seem big, but there's a reason why the Bible says eat everything that we do, even unto the glory of God. It talks about eating unto the glory of God. God spoke and said not to eat food, certain foods. Why he said don't eat things with blood in them and things like this. It is because your belly is in all. Now, with that said, this is why, uh, for example, we eat when we take the communion. Notice that we're eating the flesh and blood of Jesus. Where does flesh and blood go when it's a sacrifice? It goes to an altar. Now, this is something that's very important. So when we're eating the flesh and blood of Jesus. For God, it, this establishes, renews the covenant between us and God. One of the ways that the devil brings people into bondage is by this secret covenant that takes place through eating food that has been dedicated mm. to devils. And so now you go to church and deliverance prayers are being prayed and you're wondering why you can't get delivered. It's because there is a covenant that has been formed through what you have taken in and what you've eaten. And now because you've eaten this food, you need deliverance from evil covenants that have been formed that give the devil legal right through what you have eaten. And once again, I know that this sounds strange to many people. I want you to understand that the same way the devil is a counterfeiter. And so because the cut is established through eating of the flesh and blood of Jesus, the devil has created a counterfeit version of how to establish covenant through food and through candies and through drinks. Now, without going too much deeper, this is why even in our dreams, we many times do deliverance on those that eat and drink in their dreams. Because it's also one of the ways that the devil establishes covenant. And now that person is wondering why, no matter what they do, they can't seem to get free. Think of the witches that are gladly passing candy out. Wow. Gladly passing it out today. Wow. That doesn't mean everyone that does it is a witch. But where did that candy come from? And if it is considered Halloween candy, it comes under the umbrella and the spirit of the holiday. It's not just candy, guys. And so I just want to leave it there as far as what I'm saying now, that it's so important that you never look at things and go, this means. And what I just said is why the church must be educated in the things of the spirit, because the less we're educated in the things of the spirit, the more likely it is that we will entertain things that will bring us bondage that we believe are harmless. Oh, my goodness. People of God, give the Lord a clap with your hearts and lights. Listen, if I had another shoe, I would throw it across the room right now to Apostle Chazin. <laughs> let me tell you, I feel like even from May, okay, from the month of May, we're all together at my conference here, praise God, and I can't wait for round two next year, amen, come on. But uh, even from the month of May to now, I feel like Apostle Chazin, you've been on a whole nother level, you know, and it might be because I believe a part of it is because of the authority that God has given you over this subject. So I just want to salute you and just say the revelation and the power of what you've been sharing, even last week to today. I mean, it's it's of God. And even Dr. Jolin, I mean, everything that we're sharing today, I feel like this has to be a uh, uh, like an e-course. And maybe us three are going to have to do an e-course. Because everything that's been shared today, it's just so much that, excuse me, come on, someone say books, amen, I like that, uh, but I, I just, and I'm in agreement, woman of God, but I just feel like there's so much that was shared today that yes, it should be a book, number one, and number two, that, my goodness, there's was, was so much, and there's so much more that can be shared, but um, Dr. Jolin, uh, just uh, in, a, in a few minutes, what are your last closing thoughts? And then I want to pray for the people. Amen. Uh, because I know people are, 
right now, you're probably on the edge of my edge of your seat, like I am right now. Not only that, but you're you're about to experience just swoop right into deliverance and freedom and liberation. But Dr. Jolin, what are some of your last thoughts as we're bringing this to a close? Go ahead, woman of God. Amen. And so just to um, compliment what Apostle just said, he is absolutely spot on. We have just come through uh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Tabernacles. These are the three holiest feasts to the Lord. This is a time of harvest. This is a time where we are getting ready to close out the year. The harvest is coming in. The Lord is determining what is going to be released to people in the year to come. Dr. Ben, you mentioned even to the point of who is going to pass on and who is actually going to continue to live. This is a very important, a very sacred, holy, and powerful time of the year. Apostle just mentioned how the devil has strategically, or he thought it was strategic, placed Halloween in the month of October. You know, he's got no new tricks. He's such a punk. He does the same thing regarding fourth watch. Now, in Hebraic or rabbinical culture, it is well known that the hours between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. are known in the Bible as fourth watch. Again, in rabbinical culture, that is well known to be the time of visitation. The Lord visits his people. That's why a lot of you, maybe you didn't know it, but let me share with you now. That's why you're waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning. That's why you're waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning. You thought it was to get a snack. It's not to get a snack. The Lord is talking to you. He is inviting you into his presence. Sometimes the Lord will wake you up to pray for someone or for something about something about the nation sometimes he'll wake you up and simply invite you into a time of communion or a prayer or an encounter with him there have been i tell you some of the most impactful and mind-blowing dreams visions and uh, messages i have received and encounters with god have been during fourth watch hours between 3 a.m to 6 a.m did you know that that's when witches and Satanists do their rituals? Did you know that's when satanic cults do their human sacrifice? It's always during fourth watch, specifically between three and four o'clock in the morning. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me that the devil is literally trying to scramble the airwaves. He's literally trying to block people receiving their dreams or their messages or encounters with the Lord. Oh, the devil is a liar. And this is one of the many reasons I say he's completely delusional. The creation is never greater than the creator. How's it working for you, buddy? What exactly are you blocking? You know, we are here. The church is growing. We are in a time where there is purity being restored to the church. The Lord is raising up a glorious church. Amen. We are getting to see a, a time in the Lord where he's going to pour out his spirit in a greater measure, in a way that we've never seen before. Amen. But let's look at what Apostle said. It's the same tactic regarding Halloween. Trying to put this dark, void trap. And that's what it is. It's a black hole. It's a void that wants to suck people in. And the devil has tried to put this trap, masquerading it as something cute, candy corn and blues clues costumes or whatever you're going to do right it's not cute he's trying to take up habitation in your life in your home in your child he's trying to take up habitation in your family he's trying to impact your harvest and what the lord releases to you he's trying to erect an altar in your life that will give him legal grounds to accuse you of being impure, of being unholy, of being in rebellion, but we've exposed it today. And I thank God for the revelation of this rich word and this rich teaching that we're receiving today. But I do want to mention something else that Apostle said. He talked about the giving out of candy. Where does the candy come from? Who are the manufacturers? If there's anything that 2020 and 2021 taught us, and we're still seeing it, there are such deep roots 
to these so-called elites and these, uh, uh, these uh, the cabal and the, 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 the various industries and the things that they create and manufacture for us to partake of and wear and eat and distribute. I'm in agreement with you, Apostle, but that brought to mind something that I saw just a couple of nights ago. It blew my mind. I won't say the name of who because just like you, Dr. Ben, we're not going to expose anybody. That's not my assignment today. Come on. I did see someone, and it was a broadcast of just a couple of days ago, a live that they did, someone who's calling themselves a prophet, advocating for the celebration of Halloween. My husband knows I'm, he's my witness to this. And this individual actually said, I pray over this candy. Mm. My child and I pray over this candy so that when we hand it out, the people are actually receiving candy that's been prayed over. I looked at my husband. I said, so she's enchanting and trying to bewitch the candy and doesn't even see it right, right, over, right over her own head. This is the level of infiltration that we have in the body of Christ. It is satanic. It is demonic. I am calling it out. I'm exposing it in the name of Jesus. And if there is anybody who is listening now and you have participated in Halloween or maybe you were getting ready to, I want you to look right at me and I need you to hear what I'm saying by the Spirit of God. I thank God for Dr. Ben Lim and for Apostle Strickland for having the courage and, and the faith to speak, me too, praise the Lord, to speak this truth to you today because the truth of the matter is God loves you. You know, the Bible says that the steps of a good man or a good woman are ordered by the Lord. If you think it's a coincidence that you're listening to this now, it's not. God made sure that you were here to get this work because he loves you just that much. He knows the plans he has for you, and they are good plans. He knows how he wants to finish your year. He wants to bring your 2022 to a flourishing finish with a double portion blessing that will blow your mind. And the Lord knows what he's got planned for your 2023, but you needed to hear this. You needed to know the truth. Because in the name of Jesus, I declare that you will not continue in deception. You will not continue on the wrong path. And I want to pray for you right now, and I want to lead you in a prayer of repentance if that's what you need to do. And I'm, I believe the Lord will hear you because he hears people who pray to him with a repentant and a contrite heart. I can't do it for you, but I am honored, and I am stirred up to lead you in this prayer. And I want to invite you to just repeat out loud after me. Let the devil know. Let these witches know. Say this, say, dear Jesus, I repent of my sin. I repent, Jesus. Wash me clean with your blood. Transform me, mind, body, and spirit. Help me to stay strong as I come into full alignment and obedience to your word. I bow before you, Jesus, and submit to you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Wash me clean with your blood. I declare in Jesus' name, every agreement I made with the devil, knowingly or unknowingly, I break it now by the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ. I will not follow any doctrines of demons. I renounce every and all demonic teaching, demonic practice, and so-called tradition or holiday. I love Jesus. I will live for Jesus. I am a new creature in Christ. I have authority over the works of the devil. I will go forth with no fear. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Today is a new beginning in my life. I decree it, I declare it, and I give Jesus glory for it. Amen and amen. My goodness, amen and amen. And I feel the angels of breakthrough and deliverance being released right now. I want you to say breakthrough. 
Amen. Now, uh, Apostle Chazen, just just go for it, man of God. As we're in this open heavens moment, as Dr. Jolin just broke us through in this realm of prayer for freedom and deliverance, and even as many of you repeated the decree, the declaration of God's life over your life, amen. But Apostle Chazen, just go for it, man of God, as we're in this realm and this time of prayer right now. All right, I want everyone to repeat after me. Right now, in Jesus' name, I renounce witchcraft. I renounce every witchcraft altar that's been erected in my family line. I renounce every witchcraft covenant that's been established in my family line. Right now, I renounce all water spirits in the name of Jesus. Right now, I renounce every witchcraft curse that's been operating in my family and in my life. And Lord, any way that I have participated with the enemy in witchcraft, in any form of it, right now, Lord, I repent on behalf of my family, on behalf of my generations, on behalf of my city, on behalf of my ministry. And Lord, we renounce all forms of witchcraft right now in the name of Jesus. Now I'm about to pray for you. Father, I release the fire and the blood of Jesus over this broadcast. And Lord, let the fire of God come upon every person that is watching and that is listening to this. I command every spirit of witchcraft to be broken off of their life right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for Python to loose them and to come out of them. I pray for Leviathan to loose them and come out of them. I pray for every sickness, every disease that's rooted in witchcraft. I command it to come out of your body now. I curse that infirmity that's been in your body through witchcraft. I command every witchcraft arrow to come out of your body right now in the name of Jesus. Every arrow that's manifesting itself as a pain in your body, I command it to come out of you in Jesus' name. I command every witchcraft bullet to come out of your body. I command the weapons that witches and warlocks have been using against you. I command these things to be broken by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I break their crystals. I I break their crystal balls. I break their mirrors. I command their monitoring spirits to be blinded and to be roasted by the fire of God. Lord, I pray right now that every single exchange that is taking place in your life to pervert your destiny, to arrest your purpose, I pray that by the fire of the Holy Ghost, that it would be arrested and reversed in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray that all the wealth, all the virtues, that have been stolen by witches and witchcraft covenants in every place where they buried it. I command it to be exhumed from the ground and to be recovered into your life in the name of Jesus. I pray right now for people that have been under witchcraft spells. I command them to break. Witchcraft hexes, I command them to break. I pray right now, God, that curses and incantations will be broken that have been operating against you. I pray for people in ministry that every single form Form of witchcraft operating against you be destroyed by the fire of the holy spirit we declare that the power of jezebel the power of religion the witchcraft that has been operating in the religious system and structure in your city will be completely broken in the name of jesus christ lord i pray that you would soak every person in fire and the blood of jesus devil be completely disgraced lord tonight let them as they go to bed and as they prepare to go into sleeping i pray that everything that's been sown into their dream state by the devil that's affecting their life i pray that the fire of the holy ghost would begin to destroy what's been put by the devil and lord let their eyes open up by the fire of the Holy Spirit and let them receive fresh revelation from God in order to see the enemy. And Lord, we lose authority over every person and impartation to, to cast out devils, to begin to rise up in authority and spiritual warfare, prayer. The Lord is causing some of you, your voices, the Lord says, is about to return.
I see where the devil has uh, caused your mouth to be silenced because yeah. of oppression. And there oh, are people my. that you've been going through like this mental bombardment and this attack. Yeah. Oh. And the spirit of God says that the enemy has been trying to shut your mouth, but God is breaking the muzzle off of your mouth. It is about to cause you to lift your voice with authority. And he's breaking that power of Python and depression has been operating against you. God says some of you, even this heaviness has been sitting on you lately, and you've been trying to figure out why this heaviness has been upon you. And there's a few people here where you've even been battling suicidal thoughts, but God is delivering you right now from every that's been, that's been going after your mind and trying to bring you into this cycle of depression. The Spirit of God is breaking every evil pattern that you've inherited down your bloodline and from your family line. Oh. The Spirit of God is releasing fire against that evil pattern now. As you enter into the holidays even, the Spirit of God says that you will not battle the grief and the depression that comes sit upon you during this time of year. God is dismantling what the devil has, has done as a cycle in your life and is being destroyed right now by the fire of the Holy Spirit. I want everybody to lift up their hands. Yes, Dr. Jolin. Oh, I, you know, I wasn't going to say anything, but I'll tell you what. Yes, Apostle, I feel the anointing so strong. And I heard the Lord say while the man of God was praying that we are in the midst of a Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 moment. Now we may not have intended that and Dr. Ben did, may not have known that, but this is what the Lord is doing, where God is taking what Satan meant for evil. There are so many people listening right now that the devil thought it was a wrap. He thought he had you. He thought that you were locked down. He thought that he had a whole agenda a plan for you but God said look what I have done the Lord would say look what I have done I have on this day even today taken what Satan meant for evil and I am turning it for your good God said that you need to get ready because what's going to happen is you are literally going to enter into this position of breakthrough and transformation a position of deliverance and transformation which puts you in breakthrough breakthrough is when you literally break Break through a barrier that Satan set up to try to keep you back, to try to keep you out or away from something. But today, in the name of Jesus, you are breaking through and you need to get ready because now you're going to find out what it is on the other side of that barrier that the devil did not want you to get. What is it that is so valuable? What is it that is such a blessing? Come on, what is the inheritance? That that is significant for you, for your family, for your bloodline, for your future, for your business, for your ministry, for your destiny. But you're about to find out because deliverance and transformation has positioned you for breakthrough. And now you are breaking through and you're about to receive and discover and gain access to the things that God has prepared for you. And it's going to blow your mind. 2023 is going to be a year unlike any other year but make no mistake and mark it down write down write it down in your notes october 25th 2022 that you heard it on this broadcast you're going to finish 2022 a double portion blessing in your family and your finance your personal restoration and recovery restoration of your health restoration of your mind come on restoration of your you're getting your fire back you're getting your faith back you're family back in the name of Jesus. You're going to be a whole person, mind, body, and spirit, and fully able to step into what the Lord has already planned for you. You need to receive that and give God glory. We thought we were getting ready to talk about some pumpkins and witches and ghosts, and look how the Lord just flipped the script. But that's how God is. I really know he had this planned all along for this whole process. It's beautiful. And I look forward to all the praise reports. Praise the Lord. I want you to just clap your hands right now. And wherever you're watching from, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost because there's such a realm of power and breakthrough right now. Generational curses are being broken. Yokes are being broken right now. There is a release of the coming into your life. So I want you to just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, for the next 15 seconds, 1, 5, 15.
second, wherever you're watching from, because there are generational curses, regional curses that are being broken all around you. Come on, angels are on assignment right now, and we declare today as a triune, a clergy, we come together in agreement, and we say this is your season for promotion, breakthrough, and elevation, and every vice, every yoke, every incantation that will hold you back and keep you stuck is now broken under the power out of the authority of the sound of my voice. And I thank you right now, Father, that you're releasing breakthrough in the lives of your children right now. Come on, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Lord, I thank you right now for the power of Jesus. Come upon them. Let there be angels visiting them. Oh, I see the Spirit of God himself visiting you right now. So I thank you, Lord. Come upon them right now. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout hallelujah. Listen, people of God. I believe there's three realms of breakthrough God is releasing in your life that has been held back by the powers of the enemy. Number one, he's releasing family breakthrough. There is breakthrough coming to your family. If you receive it, say amen. Number two, the second realm of breakthrough that he's releasing right now, right here, right now, is financial breakthrough. The, the devil wants to keep you po. You, you're not even poor. You're po. P-O. You can't even afford the O-R. And the enemy is now going to have to pay back sevenfold. Amen. So there is a financial breakthrough coming to you. And then number three, there is a destiny breakthrough. Many of you, you feel lost, confused, you feel stuck. You've been going around repeated cycles and patterns, but it's being broken today in Jesus' name. And we declare these three realms of breakthrough over your life, that the word curses, the operations of the devil cannot touch, cannot come near, and cannot have power over you any longer in Jesus' name. If you receive it, give the Lord Almighty a clap and shout and give us some hearts and likes today. My goodness, people of God, listen. Listen. Has this broadcast been a blessing to you? And let me tell you, this broadcast, Dr. Jolin and Apostle Chazan, has exceeded my expectations. Let me tell you. It's so rich. Scrum diddly umptious. Uh, it's been so rich. Just bendissimo. But let me tell you, people of God, God, listen, in this moment where the glory is present, in this moment, this atmosphere of breakthrough and deliverance, someone say breakthrough. Right now, I want to open up an opportunity. Come on. We have 436 people watching. I want to open up an opportunity for you today to sow a seed of breakthrough. Amen. To sow a seed of breakthrough. Now, you are not paying for deliverance or breakthrough. You are honoring the Lord and honoring his servants, his ministers, Dr. Jolyn Whitaker, Apostle Chaz and Strickland, myself. You are honoring the graces, the word of the Lord, the servants of the Lord. Come on, somebody. I need you to stay in faith right now. You are honoring and you are connecting in Jesus' name. And you are saying, Father, I receive, I believe, and I honor the word of deliverance and breakthrough and my family, my finances, and my destiny. And I receive that deliverance today. Were you blessed today? Do you receive from the word of the, from, from the Lord, the word of the Lord today? If you were blessed, say, I'm blessed. Now, we're going to put up the ways to give today. And I want to bless and honor the man and the woman of God for their time, for their poor, for their service. Amen. But even as you do that, let me tell you, expect a greater glory. Expect everything that was said, release, prophesy to come to pass in your life. If you receive it and believe it, say amen. So people of God, I want you to ask the Lord, Father, what must I do in response to honor you and honor this word today? As the Lord has brought you in this room in this broadcast to tap into the anointing that is present. What must I do to give back? Someone say hallelujah. So in this moment, we just put a ways to give and we're going to pin in the comment section the ways to give. But I want you to bless the Lord with a seed of breakthrough. And as you are making a pledge to give, hear me now, people. Don't go away. All right. As you are making a pledge to give. I want you to comment breakthrough. I want you to comment breakthrough so that we see those people who are sowing, who are giving, who are tapping in, and who are honoring the Lord with their substance. And any of you, you would like to, but maybe you're not able to, but still make a pledge in your heart today. 
Amen. And maybe you could give, you know, another day or another week, but make a pledge today before God. And I want you to comment breakthrough in Jesus' name. And I will call out your name in agreement. For some of you here, uh, Zakia, Alark, God bless you. Hallelujah. Come on, quickly, people of God. Remember, in the atmosphere, you, you need to respond quickly. You cannot delay in the flesh. Oh, 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 you cannot delay in the flesh. Don't let your small, humanistic, logical mind get you in the way. No, you need to obey by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, be quick. Amen. Helena, Laura, Susan Kim, Melly Samuel, DC, Vandela, Angela, Dr. Angela, Melly Samuel. How about Phyllis Driscoll? Come on, people. Cameron Tom. Come on, someone say breakthrough. Come on, so breakthrough. Break. Jennifer Farley, Emmett, Rudia Malanda. Glory be to God. Ruska Tala, Didi Moss, Kura Brata, VJ. Come on, just a little bit more, people. Come on, keep sewing. Come on, breakthrough, breakthrough in your family, in your finances, in your destiny. Hallelujah. Risk Marcel Lopez, Natasha Smith, Ronell, Shirley, Risk Anisa. Yes, Lord. Dr. Jolene, an apostle, and any quick word right now as the people of God are sowing and giving uh, and sowing the seed of breakthrough. Any thoughts here, real quickly? Oh, yes. I. I... I'm just believing the Lord is going to honor their seed. He's going to honor their giving. God is a God of harvest. We are in the time of harvest. The people who were touched today, the people who were moved today, the people who are to speaking to them to get some seed in the ground. Maybe it is a seed for breakthrough, but also in the mind or the heart, it's for repentance. Maybe it is a seed of honor. They were today they were richly fed today and they simply want to sow a seed of honor but i am believing for the lord to see that and to honor that and to multiply it back to them supernaturally pressed down shaken together running over praise the lord the devil wants people poor uh, there are spells that witches cast to keep people poor but god wants us to live life more abundantly the bible says he gives seed to the sower praise the lord so as people are sowing today i believe it's going to release more seed because god is a man that he should lie as we give we receive that's what luke 6 38 says give and it is given to you praise the lord there is something so significant and special about the person who doesn't just eat but they want to give something back. And I'm not saying anything negative about anybody, but we all know that there are people, thank God not people, but there are people who will just eat and take and take. But I understand, Dr. Lim, all that you have invested into this, but I also understand what the Lord is prepared. It was a very rich table. There is a portion for people who love to give. They love to be a blessing. They just want to. They're natural givers. And the Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Man, there's so much the Lord can do for and give to somebody who's a cheerful giver. So I'm just praying that the Lord will see those sowers and honor those sowers and release a good measure multiplied quickly, even in uncommon harvest. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Apostle Chazen, uh, and any thoughts on this moment? Because we understand that when people are generous and so, that actually brings you up to another level. Look at Nicodemus, right? Nicodemus's prayers and his giving was both recognized, and his, his whole family received deliverance, breakthrough, and and the power of God. But any thoughts, Apostle Chazen, as these people are sowing? And again, this is between you, God. Right, this is between you. You obey the Lord. You hear God speak, and if you were blessed, and if you received from myself, from Dr. Jolyn Whitaker, from Apostle Chancellor, give back to the Lord. Amen. Give back to Him in response, because you know you're covered by the blood, and you have been equipped today, and you are on the verge of the greatest breakthrough of your life, Apostle. the presence of God the way that we do now, um, it's evidence that something very supernatural from God was released. Um, and Paul actually told us that if we've received something spiritual,
So if you've received an impartation, if you received supernatural understanding, insight, revelation, he then told us the next thing to do is sow back naturally. Um, and he says, so that we don't muzzle the ox. Now, to me, that's very powerful because the ox represents might and the might. I believe that every person here has already been blessed, but there's something that happens as far as continued yeah. when we sow. And I can look at my own personal life and every time that I've sown a seed into divine moments, I can always link back a breakthrough that's connected to some type of seed that I have sown. Uh, the other thing I want to say is many times when we're talking about the realm of eternity, we know that God made everything and he completed everything, which is absolutely true, that everything's done. The issue between us and receiving our miracle is not whether God desires to do it. It's where the miracle is located. The miracle is located in eternity. Whenever you look at a breakthrough, it's connected to an act of faith that, that took place, that opened the door for something that's in eternity to manifest in the physical. And so in these types of moments where heaven is open, it's easier to access what's in the realm of eternity. And so I believe that when we were preaching on this, faith was rising up in people's hearts, pertaining to their freedom, their deliverance, their breakthrough. And this is a perfect time to begin to withdraw the thing that you're believing for through the giving of a seed. Amen. So good, man of God. Listen, people of God, we're going to open up this moment for about another minute for you to respond. Amen. And uh, again, wow, my goodness. This truly is a season of harvest. And the Lord showed me the angel of harvest, the angel of harvest and caught me in the studio about three weeks ago. And the Lord said, we are in a two month window of divine turn up to Hanukkah. In these two months, Everything in your life is going to turn around. The 10 days of awe up to Hanukkah. So we are in a two-month window that has opened up in a spirit where everything is going to change. And there's going to be great harvest. So continue to sow people of God. And as you do so or as you pledge, comment breakthrough. And we bless you today. All of you that are watching today in the name of Jesus. And all of God's people said amen and amen. People of God, let's give it up for the man of God, the woman of God, Dr. Jolyn Whitaker and Apostle Chaz and Strickland. Let's give it up for these two. My goodness, so powerful. I'm telling you what the Lord released today was scrumdiddly umptious. It was, you know, I mean, my goodness, bendissimo. And uh, I just honor you both. I can't wait uh, till we do this again. Lord willing, we will do this again soon. And uh, just looking forward to all that has uh in the days to come amen any last words as uh as uh we're about to bring this to a finish dr jolyn apostle oh so blessed so honored to be a part of this dr ben i know that it was strategic it's going to touch so many lives and affect families and children and marriages and future and bloodlines this was so important and i'm praying that the lord blesses you personally and specifically and makes it very personal where you know oh my goodness this is a blessing from the lord because you are his obedient son we love and honor you as the man of god but you are such an obedient son so i'm believing for god to just blow your mind personally for putting these beautiful things together amen thank you so much for when i got i received that and uh honestly we've been seeing so much breakthrough and increase the last few months so, and this is just to begin. So I received that woman. I got Apostle Chaz, and any last thoughts? We're about to bring this broadcast to a close. Well, I'll just say, and it's an honor to do this with the two of you. Um, I love the people of God as well. So everyone that joined in today, you know, I honor all of you and just uh, who you are all in Jesus. And I just want to say to everyone, um, you know, in the midst of talking about deliverance, very easy to become very demon focused. Uh, but I want everyone to know this, that deliverance, the intent of it is to bring us into dominion. And uh -huh. so when we begin to operate in that dominion, uh, it's not that we don't have to receive some measure of deliverance again or do spiritual warfare again, but we should be more conscious of the glory of God and, and of the might of who Jesus is. 
through our understanding of deliverance. It just shows us how superior our kingdom really is. You know, so I just want to bless everybody with that as well. Amen. Uh, Dr. Jolyn Whitaker and Apostle Chazen, God bless you. Let's give it up for our guests, the man and woman of God. Amen. So I was blessed. I was fed. And I love and appreciate and honor you people. We've all almost gone for two hours, right? And so we've exceeded the time because it's going by so fast. So let's give it up for our guests today. Amen. And make sure you do follow them on social media, on their Facebook, on their Instagram, YouTube, all other men. Now, people of God, I want to make a few announcements as we're about to bring this to a final. Um, first and foremost, I do have our free webinars. And guess what? On the 31st, uh, which is Halloween, or originally the Day of Reformation with Martin Luther, uh, because Martin Luther's Reformation Day, where it was the beginning of the Reformation of the Church, started actually on October 31st. Uh, and of course, the enemy perverted that day, the origin of that day, to incite Halloween. But on the evening of October 31st, I'm doing a free webinar on Prophecy Now, where I'm committed. And I'm going to prophesy and minister over every single person. I'm going to prophesy, release the prophetic word of the Lord to every single person who is a part of that Zoom uh, on October 31st. So, again, this is what you should be doing. Amen. I mean, why why go to a party? Why go? I mean, unless your church is having a hallelujah night or something of the, or a harvest fest. But people of God. Here, this is a free Zoom on October 31st. Prophecy now where I'm going to prophesy and speak the word of the Lord into your life. So if you're ready for that, say amen and go ahead and register at our website at benlamglobal.com. Next, I am going to be back in Grand Junction, Colorado this weekend. Revival is breaking out. Now, if you're in the Colorado area or surrounding region, fly in, drive in, crawl in, do whatever you need to do because I'm telling you, these. Next three days in Grand Junction, Colorado is going to be life-changing. So please join us. Amen. And I welcome you in Jesus' name. Next weekend, I will be in Albuquerque, New Mexico, doing three days of revival. If you are part of the Dene Nation or if you're from Gallup or Arizona, please do consider joining us because these meetings in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Open Heavens, New Mexico, is going to be powerful. So come and join. And be a part of that move. Amen. Um, I also have a group mentorship called 7M Glory Equip. I'm a firm believer of mentoring and growing in the things of God. And it will be my honor to mentor you, to walk with you, and to pour into you. In this private group mentorship, we have at least two Zooms a month. You join a private group where there's interaction encouragement, community, and fellowship. And let me tell you, the people who are part of our 7M Glory Equip, they are world changers. So go ahead and consider joining our 7M Glory Equip if you want to grow deeper and higher in the things of God. And last but not least, people of God, we are starting we uh, our launch day uh, is coming up very soon for Gloco Glory Coalition. We have been working on this all year, where we are believing to be the first and the best of its kind as a Christian Web3 hub. Now, I'm sure many of you, you've heard of cryptocurrency. You've heard of the metaverse. But we are building uh, a whole hub or a group where we are believing to eventually have our own cryptocurrency, our own metaverse our own play to earn games. I mean, this is a world changer. This is a Web3 Christian hub. So friends of God, if you want to grow deeper in, you know, biblical kingdom understanding of the metaverse and cryptocurrency and technology and about the future, I want to invite you to join. And by the way, we are launching our own NFTs uh, in November 4th. And I would encourage you, if you want to support this Christian Web3 hub, this Christian Web3 hub, where we have seven ministers, men, women of God, as NFT characters, 
and you want to support what we're doing in breaking in to the Web3 realm. Look at that. See, there's myself, Georgian Banov, Dr. Hakeem Naeem Collins. There's Natasha Hen, Jesse Shamp, Amy Shamp. If you want to be a part of supporting this Christian endeavor, this endeavor in building the best and first of its kind in the Web3 realm with Metaverse and with cryptocurrency, play to earn a game. It's a big vision. I want to invite you. Go ahead. Click on the link tree link there as well. Hallelujah. For more information. People of God, it's been an honor to have you today on this broadcast. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lynn. Waver prophetic voices. And I pray that this broadcast and realm of impartation that was released today has blessed you. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you follow Dr. Jolyn Whitaker and Apostle Chaz Strickland and even myself on all platforms. Thank you for joining. Give this page a like, subscribe, follow. Cannot wait to see you soon. God bless you. And expect breakthrough and victory in every area of your life. Until next time.